Mr. Miscavige, I must admit, I'm curious. Uh, you have been the head of the Church of Scientology now for what, a little over 10 years? Uh, not, not really the head there, but certainly a senior Scientologist, yes. Okay. Uh, During all that time, mm -hmm. you just told me again earlier this evening, you have not done any interviews. No. A, tell me why, and B, why now? Why now? Okay, why not? Let me tell you something. I once added up all the press that had been written about me before the first reporter called trying to speak to me, and from around the world it stacked up to four and a half feet. By then, it was myth and legend. Uh, and then, uh, only on one or two occasions can I think of that somebody has asked to speak to me, but never to interview me. It was always, I want to ask you about some allegations. And to that degree, I'm not interested. I gave you the story about this reporter. Quite frankly, from my uh, view, a lot of the people who have written stories on Scientology are doing it from a certain pitch. Uh, they already have their story somewhat made up. Uh, they've already made up their mind. It's a waste of my time, I have to be honest. Why now? It's live. Okay. It is live. Uh, as you know, initially, I mean, we... And you to, asked. Uh, that's what well, we certainly did. You we asked. asked and, and we have been talking to each other sure, now absolutely. And, and negotiating yeah. now for about nine months. That really has never happened. Initially, me. we wanted you to come on because you folks were really upset mm -hmm. about that cover story that Time Magazine did. Yes. Now, a lot of people have been upset by stories in the press about them. Mm -hmm. Certainly a cover story has more impact than just any old story in a magazine, and Time is a big magazine. But one might argue that, that your response to it, your reaction to it, was huge. Mm -hmm. I think Forrest said you spent $3 million in USA Today alone with some of those full-page ads, double-truck ads that you ran. Mm -hmm. Uh, didn't you also run some TV ads, some radio ads? On no, that? nothing on time. Nothing. And by the way, when you say the $3 million, that, that was an advertising campaign. You have to understand, the first three weeks of it were about the Time magazine and correcting the falsehoods on it. Right. That was a campaign that ran for 12 weeks. The rest of it was attempting to inform the public of what Scientology right. was. Now, I, I, I told you we've got to take a break in, okay. in exactly one minute, so I, I may have to cut you short if, okay. you, if you go longer on this. But why were you so... What was it about the Time magazine story that so upset you? Because it wasn't reporting on anything. It was an attempt to cause something. Richard Behar is a hater. Behar. He, Behar. He had done an article on Scientology three years earlier in conjunction with the Internal Revenue Service. The man was on record on two occasions attempting to get Scientologists kidnapped. That is an illegal act. When you get somebody like that doing an article, you're not too interested. Right. Let's, let's leave that hanging in the air, and I promise we'll okay. come back to it. Uh, I, I think both you and Mr. Behar deserve uh, more on that subject. I'll be back in a moment. This ABC News Nightline exclusive has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. A conversation with David Miscavige now continues. Here again, Ted Koppel. As you can see, our hour is up, but uh, A, the opportunity to talk to Mr. Miscavige is such a rare one, and B, we really do have some issues that have been left hanging that we're going to go a few minutes over our allotted time. You made the charge a moment ago, uh, that Mr. Behar of Time Magazine, the reporter who wrote the cover story for Time, uh, that he had, what, conspired with someone to try to get some no, no, he Scientology was, he had written. He had written an original article and some people had called him up and he was telling them to kidnap Scientologists. He, now, was, he was telling them to kidnap Scientologists. Yes, and get, and get them forcibly deprogrammed, which, according to Ted Patrick, who was the father of deprogramming, right. Uh, it always includes kidnapping, usually assault and battery, and certainly with the intent to commit a felony. Right. Now, kidnapping, now, as you well know, is, is, a, is a federal crime in this country. Well, let me tell you something. There was one person who uh, he used in that article that was, that was at the behest of him that infiltrated our church in New Jersey. Uh, he didn't quote this in his article. I didn't find out until actually about a month ago. And the person has just been arrested. As a matter of fact, four people from this same group I mentioned at the beginning of the show have just been put under arrest last week for forcible kidnapping a person's from another faith you have to understand something ted these people that that he aligns with this cult awareness network which every one of these people are a part of although i i told you during a break that my producer told me in in my earpiece right after it i was going to leave it alone that all of those people maintain they are not in that cult well, awareness group no they don't because i'll tell you right now uh i spoke to uh <clears throat> 
Well, that's just not the case. But in any event... Uh, can, can, can we stay on Mr. Behar for a moment? Absolutely. Because, because you have made what is really a very serious charge, and that is that he was Oh, he involved, admits to it. That he was involved in... I'm sure he does not... Invo uh, uh, no, admit he admits to, to wanting to get a Scientologist to kidnapped. ...involved in kidnapping. That would be a very serious admission. He absolutely well admits to wanting to get a Scientologist so kidnapped. It's in your Washington Post. So why didn't you bring charges against him? Uh, he didn't succeed. He didn't succeed. Our point as, is this, as, Ted. As, as I said, said to you're you before, the, there is such a thing as attempted rape, attempted murder, attempted kidnapping. It's also yeah, a crime. But they didn't make it. They didn't make it. I mean, the point is this. It doesn't matter. It's still a crime. Okay. The person would have to bring charges. I think you're really missing the issue, Ted, because my point is this. That man represents himself as an objective reporter. Here he is on record a full three years before he wrote this article stating that he felt Scientology should be kidnapped to change their religion. Second of all, let's look at this article and let's not fool ourselves. It wasn't an objective piece. It was done at the behest of Eli Lilly. They were upset because of the damage we had caused to their killer drug, Prozac. They set up that article. They used their advertising dollar to force it to run. And that's the fact. All right. Now, if, if that is the fact, uh, you're a careful man. I'm sure that you have evidence of that. Well, here's what I do have of that. I do have a man here in Washington, D.C., named Duffy Wall, another one named Walter Moore. These are lobbyists for Eli Lilly. We have Burson Marsteller, the PR firm for Eli Lilly. The reason